Hello everyone, Dreeks here. And welcome to the first game that is going to cover Gen 2 of the Pokemon series. Of course, starting off with the mainstream game that introduced us to that second generation. Welcome to my Let's Play of Pokemon Silver. I know the Game Boy actually got added recently to the Nintendo Switch, but I've actually decided not to wait until the Game Boy Pokemon games are actually going to be added to that. I think that's only going to be a matter of time, but uh, <laughs> this game was already on my schedule. I'm still going to play it with my own emulator. And I think that's probably even a better idea, seeing how this game actually works. <laughs> but anyway, we're still going to play Pokemon Silver anyway. After the big success that the first generation of Pokemon actually uh, gave, of course, they couldn't do anything else than continue with the series. Adding new Pokemon, adding a new region to actually adventure through and actually find your Pokemon. New gym battles to actually uncover and a new story to go through. New movesets, new mechanics. It is everything that the first generation was, but better and bigger, you might say. <laughs> That's the biggest story of Pokémon Silver. The game is of course a lot longer than the first generation of Pokémon was, and therefore this is not going to be a short Let's Play that I can already give away. <laughs> but this game, even though I did play it a little bit later in my life, if I need to be honest, I did not play this one the moment it released, unlike the first generation, so... My expansion of the Pokémon formula actually uh, got delayed a little bit, you might say. <laughs> It was not a whole lot later, but the game actually released in 2000, and I uh, played it at least two years after that. I think 2002 was the time that I actually first met this game. But I definitely still enjoyed it back in the day. Nowadays I have not played it a whole lot recently, so I'm going to be very dependent on my notes again. <laughs> Which I made sure I did create beforehand. Okay, um, here we have pretty much the same options that we had in the first game as well option to um, see how fast the text speed goes, which I will put on fast of course. We can actually decide whether the battle scene is on or off. If you like your spectacle you're going to want to have it on, but if you like to go fast you're going to want to put it off. <laughs> I'll put it off the moment I start grinding. But on screen in the let's play I will always have it on. Next option is the battle style. This is either shift or set. Putting it on shift will actually make um, a prompt appear the moment your opponent is going to select a new Pokemon, saying which Pokemon that is going to be. If you want your battles to be a little bit easier, going through them quicker, you're going to want to put it on shift. We also have a sound option, mono or stereo. Stereo is of course a way better option, so... <laughs> but mono is the default one. See, there's more echo in stereo, so... <laughs> You can definitely hear the difference. The print is not going to be relevant for me because the game actually makes use of the Game Boy printer. But that is an option I'm not able to use. Next option is menu account. This one actually gives you a little bit explanation of what all of the options in the menu do. Pretty much speaks for itself. It's easier for the let's play to actually leave that on on. <laughs> the frame actually determines which um, type of frame you actually get on your menu, which you can already see right here. <laughs> it's multiple types of frame. Doesn't really matter which one uh, you choose. I think the first one is fine enough. So let's just leave it on type 1. And that is all we can do. And the rest we can do is actually playing the game. So uh, what do you say we actually get started with that? <laughs> let's go catch ourselves some more Pokemon. Dot 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 dot. <laughs> uh, mm? What? You woke me up. Uh, will you check the clock for me? Clock? What time is it? Oh, there's an in-game clock in this game. That's interesting. <laughs> Let's put it on... Uh, what time is it? Um, let check my computer clock. <laughs> well, it's 5.42, so... Uh, let's put it on 5 o'clock. Yeah, it's day 5 o'clock. And how many minutes? I just said so, it's 42. <laughs> Whoa, 42 minutes? Yeah, indeed. Big shock, I know. <laughs> Day 5, 42. Yikes, I overslept. Oh, really? Who's sleeping at a time like that? <laughs> oh, hi. 
Hello. Sorry to keep you waiting. Welcome to the world of Pokémon. My name is Oak. People call me the Pokémon Professor. This world is inhabited by creatures that we call Pokémon. People and Pokémon live together by supporting each other. Some people play with Pokémon, and some battle with them. But we don't know everything about Pokémon quite yet. There are still many mysteries to solve. And that is why I study Pokémon every day. Now, uh, what did you say your name was? Um... Yeah, let's go for my regular name. There's actually a couple of uh, in-game names you can also select from, as you can see. Oh, uh, one other thing to note, you can actually also input lower caps in your name. But for Pokémon, I actually always like just putting everything in capitals, because the game itself also always does that. <laughs> we are Treeks. Treeks, are you ready? Yeah, of course I am. Why do you think I'm playing? <laughs> your very own Pokémon story is about to unfold. You'll face fun times and tough challenges. A world of dreams and adventures with Pokémon awaits. Let's go! I'll be seeing you later. Welcome to Trix's room. <laughs> Does not really look like my actual own room, but still. <laughs> A couple of funny little things you can do here. Checking out your PC, for instance. Which pretty much has the same function as in Pokémon RBY Gen 1. Most of all, item management, as you can see. But there's also a couple of other options. I think most of them are going to be explained later. The mailbox I'm not going to be using anyway. Decoration we will see later on. But not quite yet, because I don't think we really have anything to do. But mail I'm uh, actually not going to bother with. That actually requires some link options. Um, let's go see if we have some decoration to play around with. Um, yeah, let's put our bed away. <laughs> but other than that, we only have one bed, so... Yeah, you know, we don't really have anything that's already by default in our room. And therefore, this is something we can play around with later. But here is a new feature in the game. The radio. Professor Oak's Pokemon Talk. Please tune in next time. The Pokemon Channel. This is DJ Mary, your co-host. And the text goes by itself, so it goes a little bit too fast. <laughs> but there is radio in this game, remember that. A couple of radio shows. And we also have a TV. Uh, this time around, there's no uh, four kids running around on rail tracks. <laughs> Nothing on the telly, it looks like. <laughs> and here we have a whole collection of Pokémon picture books. Which we're not able to see. <laughs> Please input your Game Boy printer for that. <laughs> but here we have the town map. Probably the most important thing in this game, other than Pokémon itself, of course. <laughs> the overworld. Where are we going to go in this game? The region is called Johto, it looks like, and we are all the way in the southeast in a town called Newbark. But there's also plenty of other uh, stuff to actually explore. Cherry Grove. Here we have Violet. And of course all of the routes in between, which we also know from Gen 1. Where most of the trainer battles and of course the catching of Pokémon is going to happen. And this probably being the most important town, Goldenrod City, which is basically Johto's variant of Saffron City, the capital you might say. All places we're going to explore. Oh, hello. Oh, Trix, our neighbor, Professor Elm, was looking for you. He said he wanted you to do something for him. Oh, uh, I almost forgot. Uh, your Pokemon gear is back from the repair shop. Here you go. Poke gear. Hmm. Pokemon gear, or just Poke gear for short. It is essential if you want to become a good trainer. Oh, uh, the day of the week isn't set. You mustn't forget that. What day is it? Oh. Would have been nice if you actually asked me that the moment I set the clock. <laughs> but it's Tuesday today, so let's put it on Tuesday. Is it daylight saving time right now? Uh, it will be in a couple of weeks, but the moment I'm recording this, it is actually 
not, but I know it's going to be uploaded the moment it will be, so let's put it on no. <laughs> Come home to adjust your clock for daylight saving time. Don't worry, I won't do that. <laughs> But it is interesting that this game actually does offer that option. <laughs> uh, by the way, do you know how to use the phone? Oh, a phone. Also a new option in this game, apparently. Let's select no, so we can get some explanation. I'll read the instructions. Turn the poker gear on and select the phone icon. Phone numbers are stored in memory. Just choose a name you want to call. Gee, isn't that convenient? Well, currently I don't have any phone numbers, so I'm not going to be able to use it quite yet. <laughs> There's a movie on the TV. Stars dot the sky as two boys ride on a train. I'd better get rolling too. <laughs> well, at least downstairs you're watching a movie. <laughs> not too sure what this is referencing, but um, probably not Earthbound this time around. <laughs> Mom's specialty. Cinnabar Volcano Burger. Ooh, Cinnabar Island reference. <laughs> but anyway, in our own house, there's nothing really more to do, so let's finally get exploring. Welcome to Newbark Town. Where Professor Elm, our neighbor, apparently asks for our assistance. And he actually lives right here in his laboratory. Hmm. Who are you? Why are you looking at uh, the window at the sides? <laughs> So, uh, this is the famous Elm Pokemon Lab. Yeah, it is. Hey, uh, what are you staring at? Hey, ow! <laughs> Root! <laughs> okay, I'm not sure what your deal is, but... Anyway, we are invited in, so let's go. Hi, Prof. Oh, Treeks! There you are! I needed to ask you a favor. I have an acquaintance called Mr. Pokemon. Interesting name. <laughs> he keeps finding weird things and raving about his discoveries. Anyway, I just got an email from him saying that this time it's real. It is intriguing, but we're busy with our Pokemon research. Could you look into it for us? I'll give you a Pokemon for a partner. They're all rare Pokémon that we just found. Go on, pick one. Ooh, we're getting a rare Pokémon. Our first one's already going to be a rare one. <laughs> New Pokémon that just got discovered. Three of them. Let's go see what their choices are. Ooh, a Fire Mouse. Interesting. This guy's called Cyndaquil. You'll take Cyndaquil, the Fire Pokémon? No, uh, in the last game I already picked a Fire Pokémon for my partner, so this time... I'm going to do something different. <laughs> Let's see what more choices we have. Uh, the third one. Ooh, a grass type. Looks pretty cute. Interesting. So, uh, you like Chikorita? The grass Pokemon? Uh, no, next game I'm going to pick a grass type and I think you know why. <laughs> so I'm not going to pick a grass type here in the second gen. Therefore, only this option remains for me in this game. This guy. A little crocodile type uh, of Pokemon. Do you want Totodile? The water Pokemon? Yes, indeed. That is going to be my choice for Gen 2. I think that is a great Pokemon too. Dreeks received Totodile. Our very first Pokemon here in Gen 2. Let's give a nickname to Totodile. Just like in Gen 1, I always have uh, my own set names for Pokémon, usually based on the final evolution of that Pokémon. And then uh, a quote-unquote human name that's actually uh, derived of that. <laughs> and when it comes to Totodile, I actually base my name therefore on Ferelegator, the final evolution of this guy. And the name I came up with is actually... Fairy. Say hello to Fairy, everyone. <laughs> Okay. Mr. Pokemon lives near Cherry Grove, the next city. It is almost a direct route to there. Yeah, I noticed on the map. If your Pokemon is hurt, you should heal it with this machine. 
Oh, uh, and here's my phone number. Call me if something comes up. And we got our first phone number. <laughs> Professor Elm. Right, uh, what more is there to see? Um, this machine is actually to heal your Pokémon. Comparable to what you find in the Pokémon Center. That's also present in this game. But New Bark Town actually does not have a Pokémon Center, so... You need to do it like this. <laughs> Let's go over the menu next. The Poké Gear was actually explained a minute ago. We can actually use it to check out our time. And check out our phone. That's pretty much all of the options now. But you can already see a little bit, there's going to be more options later on. But that's pretty much the deal for our um, Poké Gear for now. Okay, what more do we have? Um, let's go over the pack options. Just like in Gen 1, we once again have items. However, that's empty for now, so more on that later. <laughs> we have our Pokemon status menu. Currently only have one Pokemon, so also not too much to see here. We can only see that Fairy is level 5, apparently, to start with. And we also have the ability to choose the options here in the menu. So you don't always have to do it from the start menu. You can also uh, adjust it here. Um, trainer options. This actually shows your name, the ID number of your trainer, and the money you have, and of course your playtime. The next screen actually shows all of your badges. Just like in Gen 1, there's 8 badges to collect here in Johto as well. So this is also something we're going to keep ourselves busy with. Now it's time to leave. Oh. Uh, Treeks, I want you to have this for your errand. Ooh, a potion. Let's put the potion in our item pockets. Our first actual item. <laughs> there are only two of us, so we're always busy. Yeah, that's why you need your neighbor kit in order to do your errands. <laughs> but we're happy to help. It did give us a Pokemon, so... <laughs> Let's go check out the signs in order to get some more intel. New Bark Town. The town where the winds of a new beginning blow. A new beginning indeed. New generation, so... <laughs> and what is this? Oh, this is Elm's house. Apparently he does not live in his laboratory. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else to do, so... My notes are clean for now. I think it's actually time to already start heading towards Cherry Grove. Because why not? Welcome to the first route of this game. The sign will actually always say where we are. In this case, Route 29, which leads from Cherry Grove City to Newbark Town. However, we're doing that in reverse order. <laughs> And who are you? Pokemon hide in the grass. Who knows when they'll pop out? Right, that function also returns. Whenever we're going for wild Pokemon, they appear in the grass. So if we start walking around in the grass, we can get random encounters. As it is called in RPGs. And here's our first one. We find a Pidgey in the grass. Awesome. We don't really have a way to catch it quite yet, but we can actually... And put the first battle for Fairy here. And therefore check out how the battle system works. We have the option Fight and Pack. In order to use an item, for instance. Our third option is actually Pokemon. Which we can use in order to switch a Pokemon around. And we have a Run option. If you're high level enough, you can always run away from a battle. But we are actually uh, going to fight this one. Our Total Dial comes equipped with two attacks of standard. Both of them normal type attacks, of course. One in order to attack, and one in order to change status. Leer is actually used uh, to lower the defense of your opponent, but is not able to damage your opponent. This is actually a status move. And in order to attack, we actually use Scratch. And since we're three levels higher, it can already do half of the damage bar to this guy, so two of them is enough in order to take it out. There is Fairy's first win! <laughs> 15 experience points. And his start to leveling up has begun. <laughs> oh, here's another one. So let's go face the next. Another Pidgey. Oh, this one's level 3. So this one's a little bit stronger. Probably going to show the moment you start damaging it. Yeah, it clearly does less damage or scratch. So, Ooh, critical hit. It actually hurt me a bit more. There's always a chance for a critical hit with every attack. Some attacks have a greater chance than others, but the moment it happens, you actually do double damage. So be careful for critical attacks. 
Okay, since this guy's one level higher, we actually need three attacks in order to win. Oh, a very useless berry. <laughs> yeah, I did see I had an item equipped the moment you got him, but apparently that was a berry. <laughs> Automatically heals your Pokémon, you get low HP. That is pretty much what a berry does. But let's continue the fight. More about equipable items later. <laughs> there we go. There is the battle system of Pokémon. Let's continue. 